Hello, and thank you for your interest in Komatsu products. Today, we'll be discussing machine setting and information. In Komatsu's HD465 and HD605-8 truck. So with that, let's get started. We've been discussing how the HD465 and 605-8 trucks have the new and improved monitor display groups that include the truck's main monitor, multi-switch panel, and the rear view monitor. In this video, we're going to cover just one of the standard screens in the main monitor and how setting up these parameters will affect the truck's operation. In an earlier video, we discussed how the monitor goes through the initial startup screens. So for this lesson, let's start by pressing the menu switch. The screen that appears is a view of the energy saving guidance with the five other optional screens in the background. For this demonstration, we'll be selecting the second one. The machine setting and information screen should appear. When the setting and information screen is selected, there are five selections that are shown, but actually there are a total of 11 options. We're going to start from the top and work our way down through each of the options. The first option, on the top is the radiator fan reverse mode. The fan reversing mode is where the operator would select normal or reverse direction. The reverse direction mode is for cleaning the debris out of the radiator and coolers. To set the fan into reverse, select this mode. Radiator fan reverse mode appears. Press enter to confirm and then the fan reverse pilot lamp will come on. Now the engine can be started and the fan will be turning in reverse. If the dump body is not seated or the engine is not running, the screen as shown will appear and the fan rotation cannot be switched. After all the cleaning is completed, you must shut the engine down. To restore the fan to the normal direction, turn the key on and select radiator fan reverse mode on the same machine setting and information menu screen. Then press enter. When the screen for setting the fan direction to normal appears, select enter. The next item on the setting and information screen is the payload meter. When this is selected, it will open up to five subfolders. They are accumulated payload and total cycles, average fuel consumption record, machine ID setting, operator ID setting, and calibration. The payload and total cycles and average fuel consumption records can all be reset and can assist when monitoring the amount of material hauled and the truck's fuel consumption and their respective screens. The next two subfolders are the machine and operator ID setting screens. This information along with the payload and fuel consumption records will help when investigating or monitoring production. Each of the IDs can be set by selecting the individual screen and adjusting the number with the up or down switches. The ID numbers can range from zero to 200. The last subfolder is calibration. This is where the calibration for the payload meter system should be performed periodically. The PLM should be calibrated when delivered, once a month, when a suspension cylinder or sensor is repaired or replaced, or if the body weight is changed by 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. This procedure is actually very easy. Make sure the bed is empty there aren't any error codes and the float light is not on. Start the engine and make sure the shift lever is in neutral. Select calibration in the menu. When you see the do you want to start window come up, hit enter. When the display shows now calibrating, drive the truck on a straight and level road for approximately 100 meters or 328 feet. When the truck reaches a speed of 10 kilometers per hour or 6.2 miles per hour, the screen will change to now calibrating. Continue to maintain at least 10 kilometers per hour or 6.2 miles per hour speed for approximately 30 seconds. This will complete the calibration. The next two selections in the setting and information screen are the KTCS or Komatsu's Traction Control System and ARSC or Automatic Retarder Speed Control System. When either is selected, you have the option to turn the systems on or off. Both systems have pilot lamps that allow each system status. When the ARSC is enabled, the speed display will also come on with the stored speed setting. 
Both systems have a memory and will stay in the chosen status when the key switch is turned off. It is suggested that you operate or default to the on position. Next in line are the dump counter, reverse travel odometer, and the trip meter. The dump counter and trip meter are resettable and they give the operator and the company some great information regarding productivity. The reverse travel odometer is an accumulative total of the mileage the truck has traveled in reverse. The HD trucks have always started off in forward second gear range when put into the D or drive range. Now the operator has the added option to change this if needed. The F1 start at the D position setting is next in line. Here the operator can change the starting range from second to first gear whenever the truck is put into D. When selected, the operator has the choice of either F1 or F2. This system also has a memory and will stay in the chosen status when the key switch is turned off. It is suggested that you operate or default to the F2 position. For fuel efficiency, the AC economy mode setting has been added. This feature allows the air conditioning system to run in a more efficient manner, which results in better fuel efficiency. When it's selected, you have the option to turn the system on or off. This feature may not operate if the ambient temperature is above 86 degrees Fahrenheit or the temperature setting on the unit is at maximum 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This system also has a memory and will stay in the chosen status when the key switch is turned off. It is suggested that you operate or default to the off position. The last two in the setting menu are the retarder control lever cancel sound setting and the auto idle stop timer setting. Let's first talk about the retarder lever sound setting. It gives you the ability to either turn on or off the sound indicating when the lever is released. When it's selected, you have the option to turn the systems on or off. This system also has a memory and will stay in the chosen status when the key switch is turned off. It is suggested that you operate or default to the on position. The last setting is the auto idle stop timer setting. This is the same feature that was implemented on all tier four engines. The operator has the ability to select a specific amount of time that the engine will idle before it automatically shuts down. The amount of idle time allowed can be set by selecting auto idle stop time from the machine setting screen and selecting one of the preset times. There are specific parameters on the trucks that have to be met to allow this feature to operate. The accelerator pedal must be released. The gear shift lever must be in neutral. The dump lever must be in the float position. The dump body must be seated. The truck isn't moving. The engine isn't in the regeneration process and there aren't any overheating possibilities. When all of these parameters are met, the truck will start the automatic idle stop process. This concludes the machine setting and information section for Komatsu's HD465 and HD605-8 truck. If you have any questions or need any additional information, please refer to the operation and maintenance manual located behind the seat. Thank you for your interest in Komatsu products.